Good evening, everybody. It's me again, yours truly, Dale Comstock, calling you from Panama City Beach, Florida, my other home. Um, some of you have been following me know that I also live in Bali, Indonesia. In fact, last week I was reaching out to you on video from uh, New Orleans, where I was pulling security for a client out there for a couple of weeks. Um, previously, I posted some videos on what I call the four principles of combat. These are my four principles. Speed, surprise, violence of action, and momentum. Um, they're on the YouTube video. You can uh, check them out and learn a little bit more about them. Uh, <clears throat> what I also wanted to address this time was the uh, OODA loop and Cooper's Color Codes of Readiness. So what is the OODA loop? Um, OODA stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act. In fact, it was a system developed back during the Korean War for American fighter pilots to uh, basically outmaneuver and outfight um, adversary pilots. So um, we talk about UDA, the first principle is observe. We have to recognize that something's happening. And so um, what, that sounds like that would make common sense, but actually in today's world, it's not common sense. All you gotta do is look around. For example, imagine going into a restaurant um, and you're sitting down and you look around and everybody's texting they're on their cell phone and nobody's paying attention. Nobody's on the table talking to each other. Everybody's absorbed by their cell phone. Are they being very observant? No, not at all. That's kind of the world we live in today. Um, it was reminiscent of a time when I lived in Hong Kong. I remember walking down the street, seven million people in Hong Kong at the time, and uh, everybody was walking like the living dead, like zombies, and they had their face inside their, their cell phones texting, totally oblivious to what was going on around them. And uh, pretty frustrating for a guy like me that had uh, was moving with a sense of purpose and I couldn't get around all these, uh, <laughs> all the living dead. But uh, so one of the principles, first of all, is you gotta be observant. So you have to observe and be, be aware of something's going on. Otherwise, you're just a victim. Once you do the observation, the second part, part is orient, uh, orientation. So once you've observed something's happened in the orientation phase, it's like, okay, this is what I perceive is going on. Um, I have to come up with a course of action or courses of action and respond to those and respond to this this developing issue with something. I just can't stand there with uh, the deer in the headlights look at my face. In fact, it's a phenomenon called the stress shock phenomenon, which I'll, I'll address in another uh, subsequent uh, video as well. So we have to observe what's going on. We have to orient, okay. Um, and then we have to make a decision. What are we gonna do? And that decision is based off our orientation. Once we observe something happen, we go, okay, I need to do something. It's gonna be either A, B, or C. It's a course of action. I select the course of action. Okay, um, I decide it's gonna be that one, and then I have to act. I've actually gotta execute and do it, right? So it's a four-step process that has to happen almost instantaneously. Observe, orient, decide, act. Um, in a fight, in combat, I want to keep my adversary in my OODA loop. I want him to keep observing and orienting and deciding what to do based on what I'm what on my actions. Okay, so I'm always way ahead of him. Ideally, what he wants to do is get me in his OODA loop. Okay, so he wants to do the same. He wants me to observe, orient, decide, and act and control the situation rather than um, me controlling the situation. In fact, in any kind of a conflict, that's when the golden rules Run the situation, don't let it run you. So that is the OODA loop, okay? It's nothing more than a mental construct for outmaneuvering, um, outmaneuvering and outfighting an adversary, if you will. Now, um, I'll talk a little bit more how that re that relates to, um, well, well, we'll talk about business later on. Second part of this video that I wanna talk about is Cooper's Color Codes of Readiness. Some of you have probably heard of it before. Um, I won't go into all the history of it, but basically um, it was created by a guy named Jeff Cooper a long time ago. And uh, what he decided to do was come up with a system of readiness that every individual could adopt to make them pre prepared for any kind of, uh, you know, unexpected, uh, you know, event. So for example, Again, I'll use the analogy of the walking dead. You've got, you know, people walking down the street and they're not paying attention to what's going on around them. They're on their cell phone, they're at a restaurant, they're on their cell phone, 
totally oblivious to what's going on around them. In other words, they're nothing but victims. Um, they are what is in, known as condition white, oblivious to the world, condition white. You never want to be condition white. The second color is condition yellow. Now, condition yellow is basically, you're not in condition white, but you're still, you have basically your head up and you're aware of what's going on around you, right? It ties into the OODA loop, observation, okay? You're observant. You are, you are looking around and aware of everything around you, the surroundings, people in their surroundings, the environment, okay? So if something does happen, a situation erupts, okay, you can much faster orient, okay, analyze the situation to decide what you want to do. So with that said, condition yellow is where we want to be ideally. Um, we're not in a heightened state of readiness because we can't live like that. Um, you just can't always be on the, on the defensive and ready to go. So condition yellow is basically, if you can imagine a herd of deer in a pasture eating, if you ever watch them, what do they do? They put their head down, they grab a, a, a mouthful of grass, they raise their head up, they chew on it, their ears are turning, right? Their parabolics are checking the, uh, checking the, you know, for frequency from different directions. They're looking around, right? And then they go back down and grab another bite. And they, all these deer are doing the same thing at the same time. So it's almost like they have constant 360 degree security, all right? They're in condition yellow. Um, the next condition is condition orange. The way I like to uh, describe that is you come home one night and before you open your door, you realize the door's already cracked open and a bunch of questions go through your head. Did you forget to lock the door? Did you forget to close the door? Or is there somebody in the house? You don't know, all right? It's an unknown. So what do you do? Most guys are not gonna call the cops, go, hey, I, I, my door's open. I'm not sure if there's a bad guy in or not. Can you help me out? You know, it's not pragmatic. Um, time they show up, it'll be the next day. So um, most guys will probably take it upon their own to go into the home. So now what do you do? Condition orange. Let's just assume that you have a firearm with you. All right, if you're in condition orange before you go in, what are you gonna do? You're gonna draw your weapon and you're gonna make sure it's ready to go. Then you're gonna you do, you're gonna open the door slowly, open it all the way up, and you're gonna pie off the inside of the room as much as you can before you enter. And you're going to systematically start walking around the house and clearing the house, listening and observing for anything that's out of place or any noise of an intruder. Um, and then suddenly, while you're doing that, you hear a noise in the back bedroom. It sounds like somebody's back there. What do you do now? You go into condition red. It's a heightened state of readiness. Okay, weapons up in the number three position. You're moving forward. You're focused and uh, you're ready to confront any potential threat that might be waiting for you in the other side of the room. Boom, you open the door and there's a guy standing there, but he's got a weapon to his side, not pointed at you. And he's not doing anything, he's in a passive role. What do you do? I know a lot of you guys are thinking, I'll shoot him. Um, what if it's a cop? You know, he's neutral, hand, arms are down. You have to make a decision at that point. Nobody's gonna tell you what the right decision is. The decision could be take the shot, the decision could be Tell him to drop the weapon, put his hands up. Um, you know, that's an individual call. There's no, there's no rule of thumb for that. Um, however, you are in a st state of uh, condition red. It means you are ready to pull the trigger. How long can you stay in condition red? Not very long. At some point, you're gonna come off of that. Uh, you have to come down off of that. Um, and then condition black. Condition black is when stress shock phenomena sits in, sets in. You're totally surprised by an event. Uh, somebody attacks you and you're not prepared for it and you just freeze in place. That's called condition black. We don't wanna be in condition white and we don't wanna be in condition black. Both are bad. Um, ideally, we wanna be in condition yellow all the time. We only go to orange when we perceive a potential threat and we go to red when we perceive an imminent threat, okay? Now, what about when you're sleeping? People ask, well, Dale, how do you stay in condition yellow when you're sleeping, you're vulnerable? Well, yes and no. What you can do um, before you go to sleep is, well, make take all the necessary steps to protect yourself. Make sure the doors are locked, make sure the doors are closed, make sure the lights are out. Um, I never understand why people, especially women, sleep with the lights on and feel more secure. All you're doing is illuminating yourself, making it easier for you know an intruder to find you. I'd rather turn the lights out and make it super dark in there 
and make the person trip and, and you know and fall over stuff on the way to my room, rather than just giving them uh, you know free navigation with daylight so uh, or with bright light. So take all the, the necessary physical procedures. And the other thing you're going to do before you go to sleep is tell yourself, okay, if I hear any noise, any type of noise whatsoever, I am going to immediately wake up. Notice what I said, I am going to immediately wake up. I said it in the here and now. I didn't say I'm going to plan on waking up. I said, I am going to wake up in, when I hear the, the noise. What I'm doing is programming the subconscious. The subconscious is basically getting instructions that if it detects any noise, because the subconscious doesn't sleep, okay? The mind doesn't sleep. The brain sleeps, but not the mind. The mind detects anything out of the ordinary that I've primed, primed it with. Any noise, breaking sounds, lights coming on, it is to wake the body up, to wake the consciousness up and prepare for combat. So you can actually do that and elevate your sense of security even while you're sleeping and, and be more prepared. Uh, and that's a fact. And it has to do with the subconsciousness, programming the subconsciousness, as well as the consciousness and the interplay between the two. But that's another topic as well that I cover in my psychosomal engineering class. So today I just wanted to talk about the OODA loop and Cooper's uh, color codes of readiness. And uh, the next time we'll talk about uh, applying uh, the principles of defense or principles of uh, combat to business. And then uh, also some of these other processes, these OODA loops and things like that as it relates to um, the civilian world and the business world and making, uh, making prudent decisions. All right, thanks for following me. Um, you know, please uh, hit the subscribe button on the bottom and uh, stand by for more videos coming your way.